Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spirit Wisdom Wednesday. So for today's reading, Spirit wanted to check in on our entrepreneurs, and they wanted to do a reading all about how your business is progressing or what's next for your business more specifically. And since this is for our business people, they're like, we want to keep this pretty brief. We want to keep it very direct. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So as usual, I will invite you to take a moment. Um, I'm going to put my hands over my heart here. And let's just take a couple mindful breaths together to recenter. So inhale in. And exhale out. Inhale in and exhale out inviting our spirit guides to come near us now and just hold the question which group has my messages for what's next in my business remaining open to how that message might come through you might see hear feel or know if it's one two or three or you might be drawn to one of the objects that Spirit picked out. So for group number one, we have a rose quartz bracelet with a tree charm. Group number two, you have jade, jade bracelet. And for group number three, this is lapis lazuli. All right. So if you chose group number one, your bracelet is the rose quartz with the tree charm. I will sit your bracelet up here and let's get started with your tarot. Okay, I got my boxes out in case you were interested. I'm using the Tarot of the Divine. This is one of my favorite decks. All right, so for group number one, also, happy full moon. We have a full moon in Leo right now, if you're watching at the time that this uh, reading is recorded. All right, so for group number one, Spirit, what is next for their business? What is next in their business for group number one? They are talking about establishing new relationships, so I feel like you might have some helpful friends either gathering around you right now or... They're coming in. Oh, there's one. Oh, we'll take the top one. All right. And they said drop cut. Okay, we'll drop cut for the rest. Got it. Okay, so let's get started with the layout. First, we have the Queen of Cups. Then the Three of Wands, the Six of Wands, and one more, the Six of Coins. Okay. I love this for you already. All right. So I'm hearing that you're already set up for success. I mean, you have the victory card here. Also, the number six could be significant for you. We have two sixes here. So this literally means victory, that other people will start to recognize you for your accomplishments and your talents. So if getting out on social media, if marketing is something that is becoming a goal for you, I can see um, that they're saying very soon that's going to start picking up a momentum which I'm very happy to say. Also, giving and receiving is going to become very important for you. Um, it feels like you might be doing something different with taxes this year. Um, maybe the way you file is different or maybe the way you save or it feels like you're moving your money around in a more balanced way. So that's great. 
it feels like a positive shift. Like for example, if last year you spent a lot more, like you invested a lot more, it feels like this year you're going to have a balance come back. Like maybe you'll have a return or something like that. Okay, so they're saying the most important card here for group number one with what, what is next for their business is the Three of Wands. So this is waiting for your ships to come in. It feels like you've already planned out what you want to do and you've already started taking action steps. Um, Spirit wants to invite you to keep climbing that ladder, keep making upward progress. Um, so I'm hearing that you might be feeling kind of tired right now. So Spirit wants to acknowledge that, that you've been working really hard. They're like, keep going. We have really great things in store for you. And then here are you represented over here in the Queen of Cups, just kind of like an energetic check-in for you. So for a Queen of Cups type of entrepreneur, they want to talk about, you see how she's kind of covering her cup here, and that's not the typical imagery. It feels like there's another message here about protecting your energy. So for example, if you're very intuitive, if you're very loving and you provide a service, like let's say you're a healer like I am. So you're working on someone and you feel like they just might need a little more energy from you. It's tempting as a queen of cups to go ahead and do that, to go over the scheduled time of your appointment, to give more than is required or is necessary. And so spirits like, we really want you to be careful of this because a lot of your energy is going to be spent in this upward forward movement. And again, the end goal for you is balance, balance here. So we don't want to overgive and then leave yourself feeling depleted at the end of the day because we don't want you to get anywhere near burnout. So let's actually, they want to use this deck. Um, it's probably because it's a full moon. Uh, but this is the Moonology Oracle card deck. Let's get some more information for group number one. What's next in their business? The Six of Pentacles over here also can um, talk about community. So it feels like you're going to be connected more with your physical community, where you physically operate. Even if you're just operating out of your home right now, it feels like you're going to um, put down roots and connect to those people around you. And I'm hearing fruitful relationships, so that's wonderful. Okay. All right. Communication is key, new moon and Gemini. Okay, I feel like there are two of these for you and meditate and contemplate new moon in Pisces. How interesting you have two new moons. Okay. So it feels like you're being invited to revisit your manifestation list. Group number one. Um, it feels like you are already making excellent headway on what you had originally planned. And Spirit is saying with these new moons, we want to help you sow new seeds and do new things. Um, with communication here, I feel like this might have to do with speaking with people one-on-one, -on -one, if that makes sense. So you might be interested in being a life coach or offering some type of advice, something like that. But also there's this outward and inward balance. Again, there's so much, there's, they keep referencing this card about balance here. So, and especially with you being the queen of cups, we always wanna make sure that your cup is the one that is full first. So just keep in mind that you might be picking up a new skill in the next year or a new expertise. You might even be asked to do something that you don't, feel qualified for like if you like if you don't have a certificate in life coaching um, but someone's like I just really want to work with you more I really trust you I really want to talk to you about xyz 
spirit is asking you to remain open to that. <laughs> it might feel a little overwhelming, like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything about that. I don't feel qualified. But people feel comfortable with you, and that's why they're drawn to you. And especially, they feel instinctively that they can trust you, which is dead on. You're also extremely intuitive, so you would make a great life coach if that is something that you've not considered before. Again, spirits like just remain open to what might develop in the next year because it feels like you're going to pick up something new and sow those new seeds while nurturing your own intuitive um, development as well. So let's get some angels and ancestor advice for group number one with what's next in their business. Okay. What advice do you have for them, Spirit? What advice do we have for group number one? Whoa. Three, they said. Okay. One more. Ooh. Well, two more. Okay. Let's see, lots of advice for you. So this might be something that you've been asking about. Traveler, move in a new direction. Okay, that pairs perfectly with the new moons. I feel like she goes in the middle here. Sage, be devoted and committed. I love that card. That one has a lot of personal meaning for myself. White witch, be the light. And high priest, intend and create. Yeah, again, with let's um, hit the drawing board again. We want to manifest more with you. And in order to do that, they, um, they're pretty much asking. They're saying, remind them that they can say no. Um, but there's a new direction that's opening up for you. That feels like it will be very balanced for you, very healthy for you and lucrative. With the sage over here, um, be devoted and committed, one of his messages is to be willing to go the whole way back again. So to me, it feels like you are already seasoned in something. It feels like you're already an expert. So they're like, we might hand you an opportunity, but it would require studying. It would require um, going back to the books, so to say. And then with White Witch, again, it's just about keeping your vibration really high and really light. So if something is starting to feel really heavy for you, they're asking you to take some time off and meditate and contemplate under here with New Moon and Pisces. Okay. I feel like there's one more. Interesting. Okay. So this is why they had me get this deck out. So I wouldn't typically use this as like a an end of the reading message, but we are going to use botanical inspirations. Okay. That's a wonderful message about just cultivating growth though, generally. So maybe that's why they wanted to use this. Okay, what's the takeaway message? Any keywords for group number one with what is next in their business? And we have Iris, rainbows and messages. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. I feel like your guides are promising you that they will be there for you during this change. When you originally started listening to this message, you might've felt like, oh my gosh, I'm totally overwhelmed. I don't want to learn a new skill. Even though it might sound ideal, I don't have the energy for that. And Spirit's saying, we're promising that we are gonna be there for you. We're gonna help you cross that bridge. Don't worry about it until you get to it. And they just wanna remind you that we're creating, this is your spirit guides talking to you. We're co-creating your dream life with you. We wanna co-create something that feels like a dream come true to you. So if we need to adjust things along the way, please tell us. It feels like they really want to talk to you. There's an emphasis on the third eye for this first group, okay? All right, so those were your messages for what is next 
for your business for group number one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. If you chose the Jade bracelet, you are in group number two. I'll put your bracelet up there as we get started with your messages. Let's go with tarot to begin. All right, spirit. So for group number two with the Jade, what is next for them in business? What is next for their business? For group number two, what messages do you have for us, Spirit? Whoa. Okay. All right. Let's start here with the Empress. The Ten of Wands. That's an interesting pair. We have the Hanged Man. And then the Six of Swords. Let me see. Is this supposed to be upright? It is. This is supposed to be upright. Okay. I always check because I don't do a whole lot of reversals. Okay. Um, for group number two, this is pretty specific, so take it or leave it. But don't let the message take from you if it doesn't resonate for you. So we have multiple people watching. I feel like there's a connection with some place that's not your hometown or not where you are living right now. There's some kind of pull in a different state, um, maybe even specifically California. So you might be thinking about doing business across multiple states or even moving your business. That feels really good, um, especially since we have this card at the end that implies travel or leaving a situation that isn't working out for you. So you might just be simply feeling like, I want to expand. I'm mostly just local, but I really want to have a bigger online presence, for example. So you might be thinking about expanding into different avenues, reaching a larger audience. Okay, so let's get into this um, now that we've got that <laughs> first intuitive message out of the way. So for the Ten of Wands, for group number two, the main message here to start out with is that we need to lighten your load, okay? It feels like you are taking on a lot of this work for yourself. So Spirit wants to remind you that you don't have to be an expert in everything. So if you're just starting out in your business and you have no idea what's going on, it might be it might help you feel better to take a class of some kind, or if you're really overwhelmed with like taxes or finances or keeping your books or whatever, there's classes about that too. And there's software, there's, there's really helpful apps that you can use. So it feels like spirits, like we really want to help you delegate some of this. So you're not like a one woman show or a one man show, um, if that makes sense. And then with the hanged man here, so the, these, okay, they're talking about these together. So they're like, we want to help you take a voluntary break from all of this. It feels, you, you know, you're carrying every burden on your own here. You're really overworking yourself. We want this time out coming up to be a choice, okay? So Spirit's like, we don't want you to work yourself to death. And then you wind up just like, totally burnt out and then you like have to take a break and you have to take a total time out. They want that to be your own choice. Okay. So it feels like you might be taking a course, not like group number one, where group number one was like cultivating a whole new skill that they could market. It feels like you, you might be taking a class coming up soon that has to do with just the business element of it like the mundane things that might feel really heavy and tiresome for you. So it feels like during this timeout, they're going to help you leave behind what's no longer serving you. You might even move, um, but also acquire some of those skills to figure out how to delegate some of that um, stuff that can feel really heavy for you. So you might be a more creative type. And then here you are as the empress so the Empress, we want to make sure that you stay upright and not upside down. So let's explain what that means. The Empress is the embodiment of all the queens in the deck. 
combined. Um, so she is someone who is just kind of effortlessly magnetizing. She just attracts, she just manifests effortlessly. That's the best way to um, describe the Empress. So, but if the Empress is ever unbalanced or overworked, so this is, this is really an invitation to nurture yourself, to take care of yourself, to be gentle with yourself, because you don't want to block your own manifestations. It feels like um, you've really been embodying a lot of yang energy, like feeling like with these wands, let me go out and take care of this. Let me figure all this out. Um, where are my clients at? Let me, you know, write a bunch of stuff down. It feels like um, a much more fiery how should I say? You might even be having trouble communicating. It feels like you're so tired that <laughs> you might be trying to like write something for your website and you're having a hard time finding the right words or even communicating with people around you. So that's something that I am feeling. But anyway, on the note of yang energy, this is an invitation to switch into yin with the empress, to sit back Relax and allow your manifestations to come in towards you because you're already so magnetic. But when you're turning your wheels so fast and so hard, it can really burn out this energy and get in the way of it. So we definitely don't want to overcomplicate things for ourselves. Let's go ahead and get some Moonology Oracle cards for you. For group number two, what is next for them in their business spirit? What do they need to know about what is next for them in business? Okay, one more. What is next for group number two in business? I'm also hearing, group number two, that you are very beautiful. So if that is something that you've been self-conscious about, your spirit guides are like, this chick is gorgeous, or this guy is so handsome, or this gender neutral person is very attractive, okay? So, and that's another aspect of the Empress. Empress is ruled by Venus, which is all about beauty. So there is also another invitation before we even pull these out to show your face more. So maybe get on some lives, maybe take some selfies, um, maybe book a photo shoot or something. It feels like seeing your aura and your face is really important for you in your business. Okay. So we have a time for healing balsamic moon that works well with the Empress here and the hanged man taking a total timeout. Okay. And we also have surrender to the divine full moon, very synchronistic because we are in a full moon right now. Okay. Actually, you know what? It feels like these need to go like this. So it's like when your manifestations come in, the way you're energetically operating right now, it takes a lot out of you and it feels really exhausting. And then you have to take this time off. So this is this cycle that we're seeing, like big manifestation, total timeout. Big manifestation, total timeout. So we want to break that cycle. And it feels like that is mostly what they're talking about um, coming in for you, which is what's next for your business. So you might be like a sole proprietor. You might be a um, single member LLC, something like that. It feels like you are the only person there for your business. So it's super important to take care of your energetic body. Again, with embracing this divine feminine energy with the Empress, if we just allow these manifestations to come in with more of a surrendering energy rather than that yang, fiery, let me go out and create it myself, then we won't feel so depleted and you'll be able to actually attract a lot more. So interesting, very different from group number one. This is pretty much all about you and your energetic health. So let's get some advice for you from your angels and ancestors for group number two. And what's coming next in their business? I feel like you're definitely a list maker as well <laughs> for uh, group number two. 
And they're saying that's helpful as long as it doesn't become like an unproductive cycle. I'm also seeing, um, do you know that study technique or that work technique? It's like the Pomodoro method, I think, where it's 20 minutes on and then like five minutes off or something like that. Something about cyclical working, I feel like would be really helpful for you. So there's so much um, coming in about understanding the way you are energetically and how to work with that because when you do, you're the empress. So, okay. We have Medicine Mother, Honor Your Inner Knowing. Yes. We also have Warrior, Be Fearless and Stand Strong. And Sage again, Be Devoted and Committed. With the Sage, I feel like that is mostly talking about rethinking the way you do things. So as we said, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but the, the, um, the systems that you have in place right now feel like they are really depleting you. So he's saying, let's go back and rethink some of this so that it works out a little better for you. So it really nurtures you and your inner knowing. So this is really about your healing. I feel like this is over the next year. And then with this warrior energy, this is interesting. So they're saying, for you specifically, group number two, it feels like you've been sitting in this warrior energy for a bit too long. And they it's become a burden for you to feel like you have to fight an uphill battle. And they're saying, we will only help you put on the warrior robe for a short time and then you take it off. So it's time to take this off. Okay. So it feels like you just got stuck in the cycle of thinking, I've got to get it done. I've got to get it done. Um, but yeah, they're like, it's time to take off this robe and actually take care of yourself now. Okay. So let's get your final message here with botanical inspirations for group number two. Oh, no, nothing flipped over there. You might be checking a lot on your manifestations too. Like, okay, well, let me look in my journal. Well, I asked to manifest this um, three months ago and why isn't it here? So there's also another kind of cheeky message about releasing timeframes and releasing expectations. Okay, for you, we have Gloxinia, love, and, love at first sight and proud spirit. When I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew... Hmm. I don't think William Shakespeare wrote that because I have a master's in Shakespeare. So interesting. What's the message here? Hmm. I feel like for you, group number two, the more you can learn about yourself energetically, the more you will be able to navigate the waters ahead. And the more you will be able to make sense of yourself. It's almost like you might be someone who has a really strong, really strong reactions to things or gets really throws yourself into something at first, if that makes sense. But then you might realize, oh, this is not what I thought it was. And then quickly need to pull yourself out. A little bit of a Sagittarius feeling going on here. I'll be honest, I'm a Sagittarius. So I understand. <laughs> but yeah, spirit really would love for you to invite them into the situation to help you discern what is best for you. I feel like there's another one here for you. I don't want to leave you on a warning. <laughs> that is not my style. Okay, what else for group number two? What is their takeaway message? Any keywords? Honeysuckle, domestic happiness and devoted affection. That's perfect with the Empress. So they're like, basically, you can't go wrong if you're taking care of yourself. If you're filling your own cup, if you're really nurturing your time of healing, to make sure that you're not getting anywhere near burnout, okay? Um, so those were your messages for those of you who chose group number two with the Jade. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Group number three, if you chose the Lapis Lazuli bracelet, let's go ahead and get started with your messages. I'll leave your bracelet up here. All right. 
So for group number three, what do they need to know about what's next for their business? For group number three, Spirit, whoop, what is next in their business? What is next in their business? For group number three, Ooh. someone's energy in group number three feels a little pulled back so we'll get some clarification when we start the reading here but it feels like either you are pulling your energy back in order to take care of yourself or someone around you might be doing that and you're like what's going on so let's see for group number three, we have the King of Cups. Love that. Love a King of Cups. We have the Ten of Coins. Wow. We have the King of Coins. And the Tower. Ooh! What? Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm going to need some clarification with tarot in this one. I haven't done that for any of the, any of the other groups. I'm going to go ahead and start shuffling since yours took a little bit longer to come out. Um, but with the two kings here are very interesting to me. So I want to know who those are. That's going to really impact the messages. And then also you've got a shocking change coming up here in the future position. Okay. But you've also got amazing cards, 10 of coins and 10 of cups. So this is like um, a legacy of wealth. So you might be working on an inheritance or something like that. It feels like you have money to play with. And then also for um, the Ten of Cups, that's the Happy Family card. So that's all about fulfillment, emotional fulfillment in your family. Okay, so let's clarify the King of Coins here. Since we know the King of Cups is connected to family. All right, King of Coins. Six of Coins, okay. Okay. And then why not? Let's clarify the tower. You've got a lot of cards. You've got a lot going on, group number three. Oh. And then seven of coins. Okay. So let's actually start out over here. I might pull the book on the seven of cards or seven of coins with the tower. Um, but with these kings up here, so I feel like you are the king of coins over here. The king of cups. Okay, actually, I'm just going to leave this up to you because I'm always going to nurture the use of your own intuition. You are one of these kings, okay? And this other person is someone who almost feels like a peer, if that makes sense. So let's suppose you identify with the King of Cups. Let me give you a, a brief description of yourself. If you're the King of Cups, you are very emotionally intelligent, expert communicator. You're someone who would be asked to lead. You're very compassionate, very intuitive. The King of Coins is someone who is very driven um, financially. This is someone who magnetizes material wealth, um, someone who's very good at dealing with money, someone who does business for fun. They do business because they feel like it's fun and because they're very, very good at it. Okay, so these are the two types of personalities here. So I will ask you if you're in group number three to pick one that you identify with and then know that you either already have this counterpart in your life or they're about to step into your life. This other king is another person who's very advanced so if you're the impeccable business person, 
um, someone who has money to play with, someone who enjoys um, making money and spending money, then this King of Cups is coming to you to work with you. So it feels like there's an invitation to collaborate. It feels like that will be incredibly successful. Um, not only will it be a joyous time to work with this person, but also a very harmonious and balanced relationship here. It feels like that might be something that you've struggled with in the past. So if you've had other friendships or you've tried to collaborate with other people, it could feel like maybe you wanted a higher level of contact than the other person, or you were more invested, or something just wasn't quite lining up. This is easy. These two kings getting along is easy. And what an incredible setup for you, group number three. Wow. So it's like you've already mastered one aspect and then like this perfect yin to your yang is coming in to help you master another aspect for your business. Amazing. So this is someone you would definitely trust. You will know if you picked this group, you will know if this friend is already in your life or not. Okay. And I'm hearing if they're not already in your life, they will be here in the next three months from the time of this reading. Now, with the tower, this is a shocking change coming up in the future. And then to clarify it, we have the seven of coins. And I don't usually do this, but there's something in the book for you. Okay. So the seven of coins represents the desire for a good harvest, though it might require sacrifice. It is better to be patient rather than to scrap everything and start fresh. Reward, perseverance, decisions, investment, fruition. Hmm. So it feels like you've been taking this approach. Like maybe there's something that you set up early on with your business that hasn't quite worked out just yet. But it feels like that is going to, a decision is going to be made for you is the way your guides are putting it. So let's go ahead and get your Moon Oracle um, guidance cards. So what's going on with this sudden change spirit? What do they need to know for group number three? I do feel like this is going to take you by surprise because with the Lapis Lazuli, I can feel that um, you are very intuitive. So you feel like someone who might already communicate with your guides, but... Um, I'm hearing sometimes it's best to not tell us when something is going to happen because they don't want to scare you or make you worry about anything. So basically they're saying this is this concept that's falling away is not something you're feeling great about anyway. Okay, so it's not like the happy family or legacy of money is falling away. It's this, it's like, well, I tried to make this work and it's not really working out and it's actually really stressing me out. So basically something's going to happen where that's just kind of, that aspect is removed from your business, which honestly feels like a relief. But let's get your guidance cards here. Okay. Hold your vision. Fixed moon. Hmm. Okay. I think we have three for you. A fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. Um, yeah, I would say so. Right next to the fire here. And then let's get your third one. Emotions are running high. Super moon. Wow. Okay. Okay, so basically what Spirit is saying is it's important for you to stay, stay grounded in who you are. Through whatever change is coming up, something is falling away that you're not crazy about to begin with. I might even get another clarifier down here. Something that hasn't quite worked out yet. Hmm, okay. So it feels like um, the aspect that's falling away is something that maybe needed a decision. Look at all this fire. This is something that has felt, felt like a lot of adversity for you. I'll put it that way. 
it feels like you've known that you've needed to make a decision about this because it hasn't been working out. At first you thought, maybe I'll give it a little more time. Maybe then I'll be able to see clearly and make a decision about it. But it feels like you've just kind of been like, I don't know. My guides aren't giving me anything. I keep asking for guidance and clarification and I still just have no idea. And that's okay because they're basically, the universe is going to remove this for you. Um, yeah, basically the only advice that they're giving they're confirming emotions are running high, a fiery climax approaches. Is if this if this garners an emotional reaction from you, even if you weren't crazy about the situation, it feels like a, something that's been blocked. Um, just allow yourself to grieve if something falls away. That's a disappointment. Okay. I mean, I can see based on your other cards with the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Coins, those are some of the best cards in this whole deck. Okay. And then you have this basically bestie that's showing up for you. The bestie is going to be in place before this happens. So you're going to have an amazing support system. Okay, so if something upsetting does happen, just remember that spirit is here for you, that your bestie is here, one of these kings up here, and that this is falling away to make room for something much better and much more aligned for you. Okay, it just feels like whatever this aspect was, it might have been one of your earliest ideas for the business, just isn't working out. And spirit doesn't want you to waste any more time trying to make it work. Okay, so let's get some guidance from your angels and ancestors for group number three. You'll have to let me know, group number three, what happens. Maybe even come back here. Okay. The knight, be brave and honest. Yeah, that's referencing your bestie up here, the two kings that are under there. This person is someone you'll be able to talk to, unlike anybody else. So it might be another entrepreneur that just understands and has that spark. Because not everybody does, right? Advice for group number three, high priest again, intend and create. That makes sense that he's coming out a lot for our entrepreneurs. And then eagle, see from a higher perspective. All right, a lot of epic energy over here. Yeah, so it feels like you're turning inward, maybe talking with your bestie here and saying, what have I created in the past? It's like you're reflecting in the past here. This is your um, guidance. So they're inviting you to do this. Maybe look, look back at the systems that you've set up or decisions that you've made for your future self and really be honest about how that's making you feel right now because there's a big expansion coming in here with the eagle. And your third eye, again, with the lapis lazuli and the eagle is being emphasized. See from a higher perspective. So it feels like there's just some unknowns here. And spirit and the universe would like a bigger void to fill with surprises that are coming in. So you might have felt like, oh, I have it all figured out. But spirit's like, what if you didn't? What if you left some decisions to be made for yourself in the moment? So there might be after this thing, the structure falls away, it might be that something amazing comes in that you wouldn't have had time or resources for if everything stayed as is. So I hope that's making sense. Also, this talks about um, with the eagle here, transcending space and time. So you might be working on past lives or journeying, maybe some shamanic rituals. So that's another message that's coming in for group number three. And then let's get your final takeaway for group number three. I'm sorry if yours has been a little long-winded. There's just kind of, um, but that's kind of how life is. Sometimes one group has more going on or needs a little more advice. Okay, so we have Clematis, Intelligence and Mental Beauty. Ooh, interesting. I think there's one more in here for you. With that, I will tell you 
already. It feels... Hmm. You feel like with intelligence and mental beauty, you feel like a really active thinker or a really active communicator. So you might think or talk quite a lot. You might have Gemini in one of your big placements <laughs> with peace and love. I do too. I am, I'm a Gemini moon. So for me, that means I think and I think and I think. So I feel like that's an invitation to stop doing that. I feel like there's an invitation to feel more and observe more. Whoop. Okay. And then Snapdragon, graciousness and benevolence. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Yeah, so you strike me as a very kind person. Um, and there's this kind of separate message coming in for you, and I think it's more advice. So Eckhart Tolle recently was talking about... Um, how to impact the world, basically. And it's through people like you. It's people like you, group number three, who are kind, who take the time to talk to the person at the cash register, who take the time to send a handwritten note to somebody. And that really is the way to change the world, honestly. It's, it's a very far-reaching energetic effect, and spirit wants to affirm that for you. That it doesn't have to be mental gymnastics or figuring something out or taking a million courses. Really just you being you and the way you affect other people. It feels like you really nurture and spark joy for lots of people around you. So that's a little reassurance. They're basically saying you have what it takes to do this. And we are here for you to help you create that. Okay. So those were your messages if you chose group number three with the lapis lazuli. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.